I'm adjacent to my brother's property, but adjacent to our camp is on the lake. So, you know, we're all all together. So, so yeah, so it makes it nice. So, you know, this weekend pulled the boats out. Now we got to put the dock yeah, and um, everything out. So it says that he, uh, yeah, he has to go and um, he's got to go meet with um, Stacy for something today. I was just with uh, yeah, that's not right. no, I don't the first kids. Is it too loud for anyone? No, but you can hear me, can't you? Did anyone? We would ask that you sign the sign-in sheet. It's entirely voluntary, but just so the secretary can know who's here, so she doesn't have to guess. Okay. Um, I call the meeting to order. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the Legion for providing us with this room. Um, actually, in the Attorney General's advisory about what is a public meeting, it states, generally a public body should plan to hold meetings in a space that's accessible to persons with disabilities and that will accommodate any reasonably anticipated public attendance. If necessary, the body should make provisions for amplifying the discussion between members and parties pre uh, presenting to the public body. So if we ask for comments later, you've got to take, you've got to take to the microphone. Okay. Now I sit down. Okay, the first thing I need to do is do a review and approval of the April 18th minutes. It's this. More stuff. Do you have copies of the agenda? You don't, you don't have copies of the minutes? No, I'm asking, do you have copies of the agenda just for the rest of them? Oh, okay. They're on the Thank table. You want a copy of the agenda? Yes. This is different. Yeah. 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 Additions, 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 <coughs> the minutes? No? Okay. The minutes are therefore accepted. Are there any invoices or purchase orders? Invoices? Not at this time. Okay. Are there any purchase orders? Any purchase orders? Just the pending purchase orders that I provided last meeting. Okay, well. Do you have a purchase order for what was done out at General John Sullivan Way? No. Do you have a? Okay. Um, did you get a copy of that bill by email by any chance? No. It may have come in, but I haven't seen it today. Okay. Um, all right. Well, from just my perspective, I think the little deal at invoice sounds fine. Okay because there, you can't really argue with that. It was an emergency and it had to take place. Sure. Okay? I mean, there, so there's no invoice yet, it's not bill, so. Well, the bill, still on the you know, problem. turns into an invoice. You know, the price isn't gonna change. Okay. Um, the purchase order you, for the various equipment items, apparently you changed it from the very first one to a subsequent one. 
Can you email that so-called so final version to us so we can discuss it? Yep. Well, Do you have any questions about that particular invoice? Which, in, which invoice was that on? Well, no, it was a purchase order. On various items in the... It was an emergency, right? No, no. Oh. La Lab. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Lava Lab. Lava Lab. That's the water that squirted it on the control yes, system and okay. destroyed that. That's what I thought it was. I just wanted to make sure. Right. The other one is the purchase order for assorted equipment like the Lutz pumps, the sewage pump, and that stuff. Okay. We will discuss that. If we don't have it with us, I don't know how. All right. We'll defer it till the next time. No, I got a copy of them right here. Only These are the revised copy. ones? The revised. I've only got one copy. I, I gave you guys the copies um, of the revision at our walk. I'm not sure if you still have them. I, I think we sort of left them on the table. Okay. Why don't you grab them and hold everybody's name? Let's review them and put them on the agenda. Okay. Well, why don't we give those back to Ray okay. and have Ray email them to us. So hard copies are okay. No, I don't. I think those are three separate yeah, POs. Three separate. Yeah. Okay. They're three separate POs. Well, what, when's next time? You're, okay. you're the treasurer, okay? Just remember that. Okay. Um, so the next, I'll make the proposal to make it official that the next official meeting, which we haven't decided on yet, right. would go. We'll bring that up and have some definitive answers. Right, hopefully. Okay, the treasurer's report has been submitted. And I have my this paper. Uh, I don't know where it is anymore. No, well, that's part of it. But there's that, the cover sheet that shows the cash balances. You need that? No, I probably will find it eventually. It's in here someplace. I just don't like you. That's why you didn't. How could that possibly be? All right, so as of April 30th, we had $86,424 in the no, bank. Not 60. Huh? As of April 30th, we had 60000 the first line. Oh, and then deposit six. Yeah. So we have functionally. 370,000 plus plus in cash, but we can't really touch the New Hampshire investment deposit pool because we don't have authority for that yet. Okay. Is there anything else the treasurer needs to report? Do you, do you want to talk about this? Or do you that will go, that's when we get to the budget, okay. which is... Not on there. We can insert it at any point, probably toward the end. Okay. The clerk's report of billing and delinquent accounts. Okay. Two sets? Yeah, there should be like one that on the bottom. 47 for me and one for someone else. This is the delinquency report I gave. <coughs> That's the spare one. Oh my. Um. No, this is the report is from today. The official one doesn't create the Friday, so it might change later. But what's the concern? Well, anybody who hasn't paid since December 12, 2018, probably needs to be sent a letter saying we're about to shut you off. Mm -hmm. Anything that's actually over 90 days old probably needs to have a letter sent to them saying we're about to shut you off. Please come in and make arrangements to pay or we're going to have to shut you off. Mm. What? Yeah. I mean, some of these are... Some of these are rather ancient and they haven't made a payment. I mean, this one for April 3rd. Yeah. That's not. 
March 14th, I wouldn't worry too much about that. July of 2018? May. May of 2018? Time for the wrench. We've got to send out letters to these people. Anybody that's over 90 days old on this list needs to be told. That's the starting of next week, is the plan to keep on schedules. Well, yep. this report is essentially the same Monday, is it, when it generates? All the letters go into the Monday session. On Tuesday. Certified mail. Return receipt request, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. <laughs> so. 500, uh, 5,630 cents is what's over. Yes. Yeah, no. no, that's the entirety of all the That's the past due. The total amount is 9,135. I mean, we did have a problem with the mail for the last billing. The post office chewed up some of them. That's life. We could probably forgive somebody who's paid regularly but suddenly they didn't pay. It could be a problem with the U.S. mail. Is anybody here who works for the U.S. Post Office? I don't want to get in trouble with them. No? Good. All right, so on the 10th, we, on the 11th, they send out a letter, right? Uh, whatever the team for keeping it, yes. Okay. We've always had a good record of collecting. We don't use collection agencies because we have a water wrench. It works much more effectively. Okay, review of candidates for commissioner. Now, it was over there. We have one more candidate other than the two that have asked <coughs> to be considered in the prior meeting. I don't have the stuff anymore. What happened? Oh, yes, we do. We have one other person, Mr. Clem Mishu. Would you like to speak to your qualifications? If you read what's there, if you like. They don't have the resume. Huh? They don't have the resume. I think I put it. No, all right. I'm going to read you what Mr. Mishu has for a resume. My name is Clement Mishu, and I would like to submit my name for consideration for the position of Commissioner on the Rawlinsford Water and Sewer Department. My wife and I have been residing in Rawlinsford since 1971. In that time, I served on the Rawlinsford Fire Department, Rawlinsford Budget Committee, and the Rawlinsford Sewer District. This was back when they were separate. I am retired after spending about 49 years working for the U.S. Navy in different positions involving both the nuclear and non-nuclear, also as a contractor and military service. My experience is based entirely on work accomplished in an industrial environment. And then he lists them. He's an apprenticeship fitter for four years. U.S. Navy CB, two years, two months, 18 days. Okay, that that's, totally. that's the one you remember. <laughs> <laughs> Vividly. Journeyman ship fitter, six years. Work skills instructor, seven months. Foreman ship fitter, six years. Nuclear planner and estimator, two years. Nuclear material ordering and manufacturer, two years. I'd love to know some of the detail on that, but I can't ask. Production controller, four years. Waterfront trouble desk support, four years. On-site planner and estimator, five years. Process reviews for piping and mechanical group, 13 years. Concurred with my existing work above, he was chairman of the Rollinsford Sewer District for 12 years. My work in the piping and mechanical area was support only. I did not physically work on the valves myself. Using drawing and tech materials, I wrote paper to accomplish removal, repairs, testing, and reinstallation of various piping and valve components, accumulators, pumps, etc. I included material to support work to be accomplished. I wrote paper to manufacture and test pipe fittings from bar stock if required. If material to manufacture was not available, I wrote paper to provide forge material 
to meet specifications or to upgrade materials so the pieces could be manufactured and tested. I worked on paper to support multiple systems, LP, air, HP air, chill water, fresh water, salt water, auxiliary salt water, plumbing systems, hydraulics, main steam, auxiliary steam, etc. I accomplished on-site visits to verify component manufacture. As chairman of the sewer district commissioners, I consolidated all office space for all sewer district records, clerk, treasurer, and meeting space at the Rollinsford treatment plant on flat roof over the pump generator room that is being used today. That's the main office that some of you see. I took and passed the exam for grade one sewer license in the early 80s. I was involved with the design of the new collection system. Working with a firm of Hoyle Tanner, we walked the whole old system to identify existing problems with the system, identified where we wanted to place the new system, eliminated flow from Main Street to the Foundry Street pumping station, changed that portion to gravity flow to treatment plant, approved and paid for new drawings prior to going out for bid for installation, was involved with the installation of a new sewer collection system, made on-site adjustments to suit problems encountered. Installation of the new system took two years. And I remember that. I learned then, it is probably true today, that a commissioner's time is more than a monthly meeting. The commissioners need to spend the time required to know the parameters of the system they are involved with. They must know state and federal requirements and work to meet those requirements. Okay. You want to ask any questions on this issue? No, I read his resume. I talked to him when he was at one of the first meetings. So no, I'm ready to vote. You are ready to vote. Yeah, they had some good candidates. But... 49 years. I vote too. I vote for Clem. Oops. What? Yeah, you are in trouble. Because of that, I have the oath of office. And you, I'm, I'm going to give you this. You're going to fill it out. You can read all this. And then the clerk has to counter endorse it. Okay? Okay. Do you have a pen? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> There you go. Okay. I found it on the prison. All of it. If anyone else would like a copy, I have it. I've known Clem for a long time. I didn't know he did all this stuff. I just knew he was familiar with it. 49 years. All right. At the, at the last meeting, I proposed that we have a purchasing policy and procedure. And I'll be honest, we borrowed it from the town, but I didn't see a copyright symbol on it, so we borrowed from it liberally. Anyway, it sort of codifies how purchases are made. And most of it is good practice. Like when you get up to the $50,000 range, you've got to have blind uh, bids and so forth. And it's basically just good practice. The only difference is that we start at $100, and I believe the town starts at $500. Do you have any questions? No, I've already seen none of them. Okay. I will make a motion to accept the policy. Uh, At the last meeting when you gave May. us the draft, you said you wouldn't have a chance to give some feedback on it. No. no. Oh, you didn't say that? No. Go I believe it's for other sorts of work. If you want to make a comment, you have to leave your seat, run into the audience, like they do at the town meeting. Right. And that should be, frankly, after the business but you're the, you're the you decide. Um, well, thank you. You decide. But 
We definitely, anybody on this board that's not speaking about the board material needs to go. I make a motion we accept the policies and procedures and make them the policy of the next day. Fine. And all I need you to do is sign it and then we'll date it with the PR policy. Let the record show that the policy was made and accepted this day. Okay. That there, there are a few errors in here. I'm not going to butt in and tell you all of them, but if you want to see the marked up copy, um, there's a few sort of discussions in there that you might want to be aware of before you... Why don't you print it to us out? This will have to go into the records. All right. The next thing is, currently our computer-based data files are on a private person's G drive. And we have been informed by counsel we should not do that. And so we have investigated that we are investigating having a G Suite where there are multiple users, but they all connect to the, the district's website. We're going to need some technical details, but actually the cost per year is approximately $504, which then protects us from being sued under 91A for not making data public to the general public. And since we don't want to get sued, this is how we're going to proceed. I make that motion. Can I make some, can I talk about the G drive? Because some of the statements you're making are false in terms of the private G drive. And I just want to clarify the process and how our data is being stored. Okay, wait a minute. Do you control access to it? So. So that Do you control so access to it? Yes, sir. It's not a yes or no. Can you answer. control a person to read, write, or just view? I can. Then that's all it takes. So if you understand, though, that G Drive is a tool to enter the data, it's not the tool to store the data or rely on storage. We have been it's involved. a tool that's being used to remotely okay. enter data on digital spreadsheets, okay. and that data is backed up in the, in the computer at the lab. Irrelevant. Okay. And we have been advised by counsel that that is not to occur, and that public information, including those spreadsheets, are supposed to be held in a computer available drive controlled by the district, so not by an individual. And you gave me a three-page letter. Yeah. That's well, separate. Well, but you gave me a three-page letter with directives on how to move forward. And I have taken the initiative to establish um, a hierarchy that would maintain the same type of structure that you're recommending going to G Suite. Now, G Suite, the cost of G Suite shouldn't be considered until we reach max capacity on Google Drive, which is 15 as soon as we have implemented G Suite, all that data will migrate to G Suite. I understand that. It's going to have the same technical parameters and same technical boundaries, though, that... Except that the district commissioners will control access, not an individual. Shall think, we... I th but I think you're confusing the data that's being entered on the tool as the actual hard copy of the data. I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is we've got one person and you are an employee. He's the commissioner. He's the head commissioner. Have to have access to that material right. on a daily and basis. And, and it has yeah. to be on has to be the attorney. It has to be on a government computer open. It is on the 90 computer. 91A. 
It is on a government computer. It's stored on a government computer. And Google Drive is only being used as a tool to enter the data. That's where I think the misunderstanding is. All right, we're going to move on. Shall we implement G Suite? Yes. Well, I think it's a waste of money. And you agree? I agree, too. We'll move forward with G Suite, and we'll migrate the data. I want to make sure, okay, that you put in the records that my recommendation is that that five hundred dollars can be used elsewhere where we're needed. Please. Okay. Currently, we're paying for people to use their individual cell phones. We feel that this is not a good practice. From now on, we are going to investigate having district-owned phones. For the purposes of communication, we will no longer pay, once we have the phones, we will no longer pay allowances to individuals to use their personal phones. I make a motion that that be the policy. Second. So can, we, can you explain this a little further? We need, okay, let me, let me, let me explain that. Um, this is real simple. The military issued me a phone, the state issued me a phone. Yes, I had my personal phone, but you had to have your own phone for government business because anything you say or do on that belongs to the government. When we're paying people to use their personal cell phones, first of all, it meant the money in the water. But the end result is the products that you produce while government employed belong to the government. Absolutely. I have, so, I'm not arguing that, but understand that our, our cell phones right now are currently being used to tether the, the laptops out at the, at the site. So is the directive right now to stop using our cell phones for business? Well, you don't. The you don't have the phones yet. But when the phones come in, the phones will be used for government business. Not right. But I, just want want to, I just want to be clear that we're, it's okay to use our phones currently. Until the phones arrive right. and they are issued. We're not going to unplug them before we get I'm just, I'm just bringing up a point that would cause an issue, obviously, yeah. if that was the case. No. Okay. The supervisor's, re superintendent's report or operator's report, including projects and significant tasks accomplished. So one of the directives that you asked was to uh, address the, the Google Drive uh, situation, which I did do, uh, but it sounds like it was a bunch of wasted time at this point because we're moving to G Suite. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll hand you guys both the folders that I've put together. Well, what's Part in it? Part of it. Part of it. Okay. 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 We're, not, we're not going to spend a half an hour reading those. Let's say we got it. Now we'll we'll go through. We, we can sit down and talk with you about this. Okay. But I'm going to need an answer. Um, well, some of I've got, got, yeah, some of it you already gave us. I already gave you, but we had the same conversation at the last meeting that you said we were going to have this conversation the next time we meet. Well, I think we've, we're working on that right now. I think he's going to get to that. If he doesn't, I will. Um, are there, are there any other significant issues coming up that we need to know about going past Google Drive? Well, we've, we've walked the, the plant and the facilities. So I brought up a, a number of things. Um, they're listed in, in the packet that I handed out to you. Um, I would appreciate a response to the information that's in there in, in some sort of fashion. I still haven't... A correct. response to this? Correct. Uh, it's going to take us a while to digest something like that. Okay. Well, I, we also, you know, talked about a prioritization list that I gave you two weeks ago, and we haven't yes. discussed that either. So, but at I, some point, we're actually going to have to discuss business. Just, just to put in the record, I thought we did discuss it when we took the tour of the plant. Um, in that tour, we agreed with most of what you said, and we disagreed with some of the priorities. And hence the reason that it's not on there, and we make a proposal. We've talked to civil engineers to come out and assess that from a standpoint of an engineer. Well, you're good at what you do, you're not a civil engineer. And some of the information we need, which are the priorities, and where should that money be spent, um, we're going to rely on some certified experts. Sure. So if things go bad, that's where it's going. 
So I'd like to make a proposal on that. Because you haven't got that in the already. Oh, somebody else. Some of you may have seen this. You may have seen it on the web. As a result of this, we ask our longtime uh, engineer, soil Canada, to please provide us with a proposal to go through this as professional engineers and make an assessment of this. We have received a proposal from Oil Tanner. I believe it's today. Yes, it's today. To go through this and work with the commissioners and the super superintendent about how to evaluate them, to see what the time frame is, right, John? Yep. And to give us feedback on how best to approach this. Because we're not engineers, and the superintendent is not an engineer. He makes a valid point, but we don't know what should come first and what needs can be deferred. So for that, we turn to engineers. And just to, to put it on the record, we've spent money in the last year with engineers to identify the priority list. So as I'm open to working with John, I have a good relationship with him. He was the architect to Google Drive that, that helped teach me the process. Uh, but John and I had a very intense conversation about this exact topic. Uh, and about the fact that we have invested in the last year in identifying these priorities. And I don't understand why we're going for reinventing the wheel. I guess I'd just like it, some explanation there. I didn't just come up with these priorities and pull them out of the hat. This is 18 months worth of investigation and work that led to this priority list. I, I, I'm sure you spent a lot of time on it, and I give you credit for that. but. Oil Tanner has been our consulting engineers for many, many years. And quite frankly, we feel comfortable having Oil Tanner do an evaluation. Now, they may come up with exactly the same conclusion you did. Sure, I, I, I don't I, I mean, Oil Tanner is it's still us. money that's being, that's being spent a second time identifying when, the same issues. When did we spend money on another consulting engineer? We spent money last year with Wright Pierce. We did right a, Pierce only did water. We did a corrosion control study. But that was only water. And it, it overlapped into wastewater. I've actually got a, a document here that is identifying the condition of the pump galley from Wright Pierce um, because they were involved in identifying the need. Uh, Who signed that contract? Because I have the contracts and it says nothing of the sort. They, they didn't. So this is the deal. They didn't charge me to write this up. We, we worked on this last year. There was funds available. After we did the corrosion control study and the uh, arsenic removal study, both of those we did sign contracts with. I was able to in-house correct the arsenic corrosion or the arsenic issue, and it left money available, which was then allocated to do some work in the pump yard. OK. So I have before me a proposal from file tender. We have a long-term relationship with Oil Tanner. They've helped us with a lot of projects. Mm -hmm. And personally, I feel more comfortable with their professional engineers because we have a relationship with them. And the cost for this particular consulting thing is like $4,700, $4,200, which is pretty cheap considering what they're going to do. And so I will make the motion that we accept their proposal and then and just to, just to be clear, forty two hundred dollars is almost the cost I've made one, motion. one replacement pump in our basement. I've made a motion. And just put it on the record. Very well. We will sign the contract.
Okay. Now, I understand, Ray, you have some issues you want to bring up. Oh, by all means. We spent about four hours, uh, two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, uh, doing a tour of all of the facilities, both the, both the water section, the substation, and the main plant for the storage. Some things came up that I saw that I think we need to have right off the bat. And I'll just go down the list of things that I saw personally. Uh, in the main, in, this is one of the things we're going to have to prioritize, and we'll wait until the engineers get their opinion. But um, out to, one of the things you should be put out to comp competitive bid is a fence or some kind of a rail around the lagoons. It's about six feet deep there, and they're there in the winter time. There's very little space, and for some reason, there's no fence around it. Somebody can easily fall in while working there. It's a safety hazard. I, I had also recommended, which um, Vernon already brought up, that we take a look at assessing the cost for fixing some things. One of which is the broken clarifier that's been broken for two years. As it sits right now, if the current clarifier broke down, we don't have a backup. So getting that second one online, according to Ray, it's about $75,000. When the engineers come in, to me, that's one of the priorities because you have no backup without that. That creates a whole other host of problems with pollution if that isn't fixed. And that's apparently been broken for several years now. Um, one of the things I did know was purchase of fans for Porter Well. Um, this venting, there's actual plugs up in the peak, but apparently no one ever put the vents in up inside the water facility there. And this corrosion going on between a mixture of chemicals, off gassing, et cetera. There should be a barricade there between the chemicals. And I don't believe that meets a look up on the MS, MSDS. Um, but I think the chemicals are supposed to be separated different than they are here. Um, uh, moving on, one of the things I would like to see is the purchase of a four wheel drive vehicle for the district for daily work use. And part of that would be um, to approve a new policy. One of the big things that we just had was a problem with the, with the um, well on the not board, was General Sullivan. General Sullivan uh, well had, went out, froze, snapped, uh, flooded, cost us quite a bit of money. One of the simple things that happens if you've owned property, and it's been vacant for a period of time, one of the first things you have to do is constantly check. One of the things I want to propose is a policy where there's a simple sheet, like you would go into an armory in any military alarm enforcement, and you sign in and sign out that you check that, and make notes as to whether the condition is. Um, freezing pumps, etc., don't happen right away. And that leaking and causing the damage and throwing off the water was a big problem. I think the simple way to do it is every one of these properties, there's only four separate sites here. Simple process, every day, somebody goes and checks every single one of them. If you take a look at them every day, those of you that may own property and go to Florida for the summer, for the winter, a lot of you see you have uh, high water and, and low temperature systems that set off an alarm. They're relatively cheap. You can get them in most, most supply stores and to install one of those in each of those out of facilities so that we don't have that kind of damage. Furthermore, the eyes on can catch this stuff beforehand. If people are not going physically to check that pump room every day, it doesn't take very long. I mean, literally, you could walk to all of these from, from right here at the plant. So with a vehicle, you could go in, you can check that. Somebody signs in, they put the time and the date, and once a month we collect those forms and they become official files so that if we do have a problem, we can see where it started, or if there is a problem, it's documented so that somebody can make sure that it's fixed right off the bat. To hear that something, well, we knew about this six months ago and somebody didn't do about it, this way here is a working policy to fix that right off. Oh, 
Go ahead. Um, just so you understand, that policy is already in place. We do site checks daily and spend multiple hours. Do you have site. Do you have a sheet? Because I didn't see a sign-in sheet there at all. Okay, so that's where there's a digital sign-in sheet on the laptop that will be shared with everybody through G Suite or however we end up doing it, so that you can track, like you asked, where everybody is at a, at a regular basis. And in those in those check sheets are not only PMs but site checks. So I, what you're proposing is already in place. I just want to make sure that what you're insinuating that we're not doing on the record is not accurate. So you're telling me that pump, that, that pipe that failed in the water leak, nobody would have caught that if they were up there every day? No, I already told you what the, what the correction to that is. We need a high water, high water alarm or ice, high wet well alarm on the sump deck. Had we had a high wet well alarm, it would have triggered letting us know we had a leak in the basement. That was one of the things I just recommended because you mentioned that. And certainly, low temperature alarm should have been on there years ago. Well, I don't know why this stuff, and I'm not going through history, I don't know why these things weren't done. But active documentation shows that we did due diligence. Active documentation is in place. Well, and you're, and you're insinuating it. I'm not insinuating anything, as I said. This is one of those things that happened in the past. The problem is to fix this and not create the same problem in the future. Not to go back over history. I frankly don't give a damn about the history. What I give a damn about is that it's fixed at a reasonable price and that the rate payers don't have to pay for this. That's what I'm concerned about. What does that happen? It didn't freeze either. It wasn't a frozen pipe either. I, I just want to get the back straight. What happened was there was a flow meter and the seal to the flow meter failed. So, it, so just to make sure we have facts straight, this wasn't a frozen pipe, this was a mechanical failure. And that happens in this industry. There was a there was a operator at that site within two hours of that break. Now, we had an operator, two operators going back to the site delivering a piece of furniture that we were taking out of another location, and that's how we caught it. The only way that leak would have been detected is when that flood actually hit the control panel and shorted everything out, shut the pump down, and then I would have gotten an alarm stating that we had a, we had a... Um, um, I think what Bob is trying to say is if you have eyes on regularly, at least daily, the chances of having a serious failure are reduced. And more time at let him okay. finish. Let him finish. But you you reiterating your Ray, stand down. Okay. What Bob is trying to say is if you do eyes on instead of waiting for a piece of furniture to be delivered to discover it, if you had eyes on, you would have discovered it potentially sooner. Now, it may never happen again in a million years. It's like the 100-year flood that happens every five years. But it happens. And anything else you can do to ensure that disaster doesn't strike is to the benefit of the district and the benefit of everyone. Can I speak now, or do I, do I have your permission? Can I, can I make my comment? Well, you made your comment. No, because, yeah. because what's being repeated over and over again is that we hadn't been at that site before that break, and that's not accurate. We've been at that site multiple times that day, doing multiple checks and multiple balances to the to the chemical addition. So to insinuate that we hadn't been to the site is false. I, I just want to. I never said there, no one was at the site. I'm okay. saying very simply, if you show up at the site every day, the likelihood of that happening is way diminished. But we Wait. do show up every day, and it still happens. So I'm Noted. missing the. Uh, Let's move on. I'm missing Noted. the point. I guess. You're just going back. Yep. There's nothing on my agenda, but you may have something on your agenda that you wanted to cover. Well, I've handed out all the documents. You're not going to look at them now. That's fine. Um, I've got a few items I, that I brought up. Um, Pending POs, obviously we're not covering that. General Sullivan Repair, he's given me the authorization for yes. that. Yes, it's a problem. Um, the operating budget, I'd like to discuss what the what the path forward is, because there's been 
uh, adjustments to the, the operating budget of the past, and there's been no discussion on how the money's going to be allocated going forward. I'll, I'll give you that. This is the treasurer's report with an adjustment line, which reflects the cuts to the budget. Now, it's that one little line that goes across, and it says, I believe the water is at 34%, yeah. and sewer is at 30%. What is it? No, let's see. Okay, let's see. Oh, no. Okay. Right. Water is at 34% and sewer is at 30%. We are at 33% of the year, so we're pretty much right on target. We would like a little bit more padding in that <coughs> to make me feel more comfortable, but otherwise we seem to be tracking right where we should be. Of course, it's only a third of the way through the year. So you don't know what's going to happen next. Um, the other topic I want to discuss is the Warren Articles. What is the plan of the commissioners on the approved Warren Articles? I know you shared with me that that's just the, the opportunity to use that money. It's an authorization. Okay, so we, plan, we can elect not to spend it. What is your position right now on those Warren I, Articles? I believe that the $50,000 one is part of this thing that the engineers are going to go over. I don't know what the engineers that uh, PowerPoint presentation okay, you sent so out in color? They're going over my specific. They're not going in and doing their own analysis. They're just no, they're going to work with you to say, tell me about this, identify this, what is this, okay? And once that's in, and we know what they think needs to be done immediately and what can be deferred, we will act on that. Okay, so the Warren articles are on hold right now, so this is correct. Right. Simple answer. Next. So the prioritization report. Uh, Willie Street flushing connection. I discussed it at one of our first meetings. Um, we put the hydrant in. Yes. But we need to add the actual flushing connection so we can flush to the sewer system. What do you need in the way of equipment to accomplish that other than a fire hose? We're going to, well, the goal was to install a fixed drain that would go right into the, the hydrant is on the opposite side of. The the street, cover, yes. And it happens to be on Willie Street, which is right where the school is. So we can't shut down traffic there. The buses come through that. Section. Right. Um, but there's a culvert there, you know. There's a culvert there. Yeah, yeah on Willie Street. Right into the lot. You well, no, you can run the hose right to the culvert. Yeah. You run it right under the culvert. Right in the culvert, actually. So, so the, the flushing connection, we're not moving on that. Not until we explore the idea of running the drain line through the culvert. Now, it would have to be a removable one, like a fire hose. But, you know, on the short term, that addresses the problem, flushes the system. And I have a question about, apparently at some time, the Willie Street was pegged or ice pegged, but only phase one was done. Why wasn't phase two done? Because it was too far gone to spend another almost $11,000 to pay. John, can you add that to your list of tasks, please? I, I, I'm concerned that we spent money to do the first half of it and then didn't do the second half of it to see if that benefited the system. That's that's like money down a rat hole. Just so we're clear, though, we're not having issues on Willie Street right now. We've gone, we we'll moved past that whole flushing process and we've implemented the PO4 addition, which has cleared up the water on Willie Street. It's a band-aid for the ultimate issue, which is the pipe is past its useful life. So um, oh, we, can send, we, can, we can send another $12,000 down that water line if you'd like, but it's, it's not going to make a difference. It's not going to turn back what we what want. Well. That's and that was the decision that we made. Okay. We'll that's move one, on. That's one for the engineers. Right. Definitely one for the engineers. Next. Um, you said there was a few things we can't discuss. Yes. So we've got an employee coming up on his annual. And that will be handled between the commissioners and that employee only. Okay, that's fine. Um, the other, well, so it, this is a group 
conversation as a whole, we need to discuss the retirement plan that was left. We don't have the money. Okay. That's easy. That's easy. Okay. So unless you unless we take the money from someplace else, and I don't see a lot of opportunity in this budget to take okay. almost twelve percent of wages and send it to a retirement plan. I just don't see it. Then you understand that that was offered and promised all employees. All offers are subject to funding availability. It was in the proposed budget of the state building. But it isn't there now. Okay, that's fine. I just, you know, I want to make it clear that it was offered, it was promised. I understand. Through discussion, through contract, so. There was no contract. Well, there is. No, there was an understanding. There was a meeting of minds, but there was no contract. Well, oral contracts hold the same way that it's written. I would be careful where we're going to go with that. Okay. Right. We don't have the money. That's it. Okay. Oh, that's, 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 that's it. Anything else? There some questions. Okay. Now, yes. I'm, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can talk loud enough. You don't have to bring me the mic. Are you sure? No. Uh, one thing I was concerned with in the budget that was presented, they're talking about the pump galley system upgrade. It says money coming from the general fund, no in fact the rate payers. Do we have a general fund? Is there any money left in that? Or no, what? it's fund balance, not general fund. Uh, well, it said general fund, yeah, that's all it says. I know. This, not, not the correct term. So, so we don't have money in the general fund balance to, to cover this at this point. We don't have excess funds in the operating account at this time, nor do we foresee it. Okay. However, when you say you can take it from fund balance, you can take it from the stuff in the New Hampshire Public Investment Pool, NIDIP, as they call it. Okay. That's the authorization. Anything else? Okay. Other comments? Yes, Frank? A couple things. You want the mic? No. Can you stand up, though? <laughs> <laughs> Frank Roselli, 464 Scott Hill Circle, uh, past commissioner. Uh, I want to put on the record that um, before the, um, the new board came into play, or even the interim board, myself, Dan, and um, Michael, Michael Point, uh, had decided in a meeting that HTA had, had been dropping the ball and that we weren't really happy with their performance. That's why we went on and found a different engineering firm. So now an engineering firm comes in and researches everything. Now you're going back to the firm that wasn't really supporting us in a good way. I think that's wasting money. That's all I want to say about that. Ice pigging. Next item. The pipe is missing, it, it has at least two inches of, of a six inch pipe, you've got three and a half inches left. That pipe was in, inspected by an engineer. Why are we wasting money to do that? Or why are you wasting money to do that? That's it, that's enough for now. I'm not sure we are, that's why I want to see an engineer give me an assessment. I don't know why you can't, Trust the engineers that were brought in, but enough. Okay. Angela, Thank you. why aren't you at the budget committee meeting? Well, because this is a very important meeting as but well. But you were an elected member John. of the Excuse budget me, committee, I'm and you took a vote. If you don't mind, okay. for it, my okay. turn to make a comment. And uh, I would have been at the budget committee meeting if you had not changed your meeting time and day to this day. Typically, it's been on Thursday, making it possible for the citizens of this town to attend both meetings. Just comment. I would also comment on the minutes. I am not a guest. In fact, none of these people are guests. Caroline Kendall, Tamara, cannot pronounce her last name, Nichelowski, Jessica Welch, uh, Adam Carrigan, and Pat Kowalski, we're all members, uh, paying members of the district. We're listed as guests. There was a guest present, that's okay. I just wanted to get it corrected in the minutes, if you wouldn't mind, and put us down as members. And Lorraine Hansen is one of the guests who was present. I think they may have been others, but I don't have them on this list. Um, and uh, so my second point was that 
in the future, these meetings should not be held in conflict with the important work of the Budget Committee so that those of us who are responsible to that can attend those meetings. I can't imagine there's not another day of the month that we, we can all come to agreement with on Water Sewer District. The last thing I would say is there's no need to be antagonistic with each other. This is a public meeting, and I think we can be a little more decorous in the way that we interact with each other. You're looking at me in such another kind of way that makes me personally uncomfortable. I really am trying to be respectful in my comments to this organization, and I would hope that we can be respectful for the people who work really hard for us. I'm not just here as, you know, uh, somebody who's curious to know. I pay to have these services. I pay for the professionals who are doing their best. There is no reason for us to beat up on each other, whether it's coming from a professional, a member of our staff, or a member of the commission. I heartily implore you to um, treat each other with a little bit more kindness. Thank you. Anyone else? Yep, Robert Cavanaugh. I'd like to ask. I'm sorry, Robert. What? Cavanaugh. Yeah. Um, did you guys review the engineering stuff that was done previously for this list that you have? Oh, yeah, we and I, we didn't even know Is that on the record? The Previous engineering, okay. I am. didn't know it existed. All right. Can you review that? And also, what is the scope of work on the contract that you signed with the new engineering company? Uh, I'll give you a copy of it. And also, I would like to know, with this, do they take any liability or anything off our plate, or are they just? Does anyone take liability? No, I mean for for <laughs> what they're doing. Does the state going to come after us? No. Yeah, I mean, if they screw something up, you always have. Yeah. Same thing. And what if this, you know, comes back pretty much the same as the other one? You have to stay with the Good. You want to wait the recommendation and everybody's on the same page. So, are you going to review the other one prior to this? What other one? We the don't know what you're talking about. Refer to him. Can I speak? I Can I speak? Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Everyone knows how the meeting went. Um, it was a uh, a ploy to not hear from the engineering firms that were there to discuss what, what needed to be done. Well, so the answer... You mean the annual meeting? The annual meeting. So, so, so just to make it clear, a group of people came in, voted to dismember the group that was in place, and voted to not hear from the Department of Environmental Safety, who was there, to not hear from the engineering firm that was there, and to not hear from Dr. Malley. Dr. Malley from UNH, that we had four interns that did all kinds of research work for us. It was a ploy to stop water and sewer from spending any money. So, you folks here in the audience, beware of what's going on here. Thank you. Excuse me, referring to the annual meeting. I get a little upset at the annual meeting. And I uh, calmed down a little bit since then. But, at the annual meeting, we were talking sewerage. And you were bringing people up for water. In general, the people that were there were water. And we were talking sewerage. Uh, clown. You know? Direct your comments to water. I understand. But that's, that's the point why the other people didn't speak, because we were talking sewerage at the time. If we brought them up when we were doing water, it would have been something else. Just comment. Water is currently correct. It is working, taking care of the arsenic problem, etc. Correct. Right? Correct. So the only real problem is currently. Obviously, there's more problems, but currently, the only one is the Willie Street piece. Correct. Right? Not correct. We've got uh, we're wrapping up a, an asset management study with right here, uh, and there will be a full report and a presentation on all the findings. Uh, but there's more going on than just Willie Street. There's always more going on. The question is, and I think this came up at the first meeting, so let's put this on the table right now. Is the water safe for these people to drink? Period. It is. Okay. That's a good starting point. And I think that a lot of people brought that up and have heard it go back and forth. Now we got it on the record. Thank you. On the record though, you know, eighteen months ago it wasn't. Just so we're clear. It is now. But it was not when I took over. Good. Hi, Jennifer Lentz. 
So I have three things, and I can wait if you want me to. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so first thing was, you know, Robert, you talked a lot about your recommendations around a fence, around the, the containment, things like that. Low-hanging fruit. Yeah. However, expense, and I don't know exactly how that works to help support the quality of our drinking water. So what is your plan to prioritize your initiatives against what's already been determined as initiatives and risks, imminent risks or potential risks, based upon the current condition of our system? Okay. First of all, you just heard what you said. The system is currently working. Does that mean it doesn't need upgrade? No. Do I have a priority? I don't. But I do have a priority about the safety of these people walking around. At one point, the two lagoons are very close. And we were here with Ray, and I stepped back. I said, Jesus, if somebody slipped on the ice, they're going to fall into the lagoon. And there's no fence. There's no rail. We're not looking at a major production here. We're looking at a simple rail so that if somebody falls or slips on the ice, they don't fall in and get themselves injured. That's one of the first priorities was getting them their safety gear. Yeah. The proper safety gear was not there. They got the proper safety gear. We bought exactly what he decided we needed mm -hmm. for that. Why it wasn't done, I don't know. What they had, I don't know. I don't really care. What I care is we've got employees, and I don't want to see them fall into a hole. I want to see this, the, the, the uh, district in the town get sued because of the district. Okay, get sued, but you know Jim Ryan loves and he's oh, yeah. to everybody. For simple, low-hanging fruit, when you walk out there and you see this stuff is open, these guys walk around that every day. That's a, that's my big priority. The other stuff, the engineering, I'm not an engineer. I've done a lot of things, mechanical, I've done a lot of design work on stuff. That guy's an engineer, I'm not an engineer. You know, we've got a new commissioner who knows this inside out and backwards. But okay. again, not an engineer, correct? No, not so an engineer. You, no. Not an engineer, but you, I mean. But knows from yeah. the day one what So the point is, I'm going to rely on that. But not everything is priority one. We didn't need to figure out what priority one is. I can tell you one of the things on the maintenance of my walkthrough was, one, that open ditch with, you know, the, the two balloons with nothing around it. The other thing is we only have one clarifier. And that's when broken something easy, you know, the time. And that's okay. certainly about the operation. Yeah. Or it's about the operation because if the other one goes down, what's the backup plan? There is isn't one. There's two lagoons. Yeah. They both work. There's one clarifier. Not one goes out, we're screwed. We had a pump go down just before we were going to take our meeting with him. It took a while to get that fixed. It takes a while to get parts and repairs. If things are working, you can get a second one in there. Right. You always have to have a backup for anything. Anything mechanical, anything other than a rock sitting on the earth needs maintenance. And at some point it's going to break. So those were low hanging fruit. Don't the other stuff is whether the pumps come first or the line on Lily Street. I don't have any priorities. But I, I do know stuff that's easy. Putting a fan up in the um, quarter well to keep that ventilate, ventilating that gas out. That's a low-hanging fruit, especially when there's a plug already there. I mean, somebody needs to cut a hole in the wall and put a fan in. Right, and I think you need to think about the other things, like the chemical room, where you have the... the well, I already brought that basic, up. Right? I heard you bring that up. Yeah. But if you do a failure mode effects analysis, which I think you probably know about from your time in the military, I'm guessing the risk number, severity number, associated with a slip or fall into a lagoon is lower than inhalation and respiratory issues due to that room. Or the quarter well, choose it. I'm just saying, you're, pull, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. We have a fixed amount of money as an or, as a, as a I'm town. I'm eminently aware of that. So eminently aware of that. I, I pay the bill on, on a ridiculous amount of water and sewer here compared to other towns that I own property. Fully aware of that. And that's part of the reason why we're going to buy every stinking thing that comes down the pipe. And unfortunately, when I get a package sometimes, it shows me this thick. I need to pick and choose. Not everything. It's just like a household budget. Kids say, oh, I want a new car. Mom says, I want this. I understand budget. You've you yeah, got to make so priority. I understand. I'm just, I think the thing that would be helpful, I think, for you to do is to have a 
think for people in the town is impact to the water, impact to the safety, impact to the overall budget and bottom line. I would like to understand, um, you know, you certainly you have a, a fabulous tenure of work, but we also had two folks who were here last month and were, um, you know, brought Excellent themselves candidates. forward as candidates. So I'd like to understand the decision-making process because we, we did not see any decision-making process. We saw a, a, a motion and an approval tonight. So I'd like to understand why and how you came to the decision. It, very simple. The other guys, one, is green out of, very good guy, but he's green out of school. I talked to him, okay? He's working for a company, seems very nice, and certainly a future person for this town. He sent me an email, I sent him back a nice email, I think he's really potential. But when I've got somebody with this kind of background, and this kind of history, and this kind of knowledge, why would I take that? But you don't have experience. You have government experience. You have a lot of experience, right. but no. Here's the thing. You always rely on technical experts, always. And this guy's got technical experts, okay? I know management, he knows budget, he's got technical expertise. So you're always going to have a high and a low. Not everybody's a specialist in everything. And working in the plant is not the whole project. So that was one guy. What about the other guy? The other guy was, he was, he's, he's, right a, he's, right a, <laughs> he's an operator, we're over in Dover. Yep, 20 years experience. 30 30 30 oh, 31, sorry. Well, you're, you're 18 short. Yeah. <laughs> No reason other than the fact that you've got to pick one, not three. It was very simple. All right. And you're, um, the other piece is um, rate study. So you had a rate study come back in? We have a preliminary one. But we have to do more analysis. So did, hold on. I want to back up and say, what, what was the deliverable from the company that did the rate study for you? Because you nobody paid. Did. Nobody, nobody did. did. Nobody did it. We're doing it. No, but a rate study, something was done. Oh, that. You, you're talking about the University of North Carolina. That, 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 this thing. I, I don't know. This thing, it's this thing. That's not a study for the district. That was a study for all water systems and sewer systems, I guess, throughout, that participated in their study. And I went through it and I looked at it and there were multiple um, assumption errors in it that just don't apply to wrong. So we're going to do our own analysis, and we've started the process of taking a look at the, the old flat rate, 15,000 gallons per unit, you get paid so much. We want to do like Eversource does. We charge you for what you use. So I guess the, the sum it up, you guys have come in, this is month two, right, since the March election, and you've decided that there's really, this is a clean slate, you're going to do what you want to do, regardless of what's been done in the past, and pull in, you know, other firms and other people that you're comfortable with. We've done First, a lot in that time period, haven't we? We've done a lot accomplished. I don't know that you've done a lot accomplished. I think you've, you've you're circling you're you're circling the wagons, and and not necessarily you've not made any progress in terms of improving the water quality or continuing to maintain the water quality. Well, you just heard him say, water quality is always up for improvement, yep. but it's safe right now. Yep. As he said, it was not safe 18 months ago. Correct. It is currently safe. But what are you doing to make sure that it maintains and stays safe? Because what I hear is, well, look at that next month. You didn't bring it. We don't have it. So I'm, I'm hearing a lot of excuses about why we're not looking at it. We're lucky that things, that you fixed the pumps that went wrong three weeks ago. That's his job. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. is. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. We are lucky that he can technically fix those. Things. If he Obviously, didn't, we'd find somebody else who did. You hire because that's part of the job. And we pay for it. And you pay for it. Everybody well, we pay does. for it now. Exactly. And he does do a good job. But and now you're telling him he can't have retirement benefits. He doesn't have a contract. We can't. Why? Well, again, we're, we're talking about yeah. personnel. We're not that's getting into it. You know, we can do this all night long. You guys just need to be accountable to the town. And you're not. You're being disrespectful to elected officials, 
staff of the commission and the town folk, people who have volunteered and are coming here. And are paying. Right. We're all paying. We're all paying. We're all paying. We pay too. And we're accountable under the law. Understand, there are RSAs. But the RSAs don't say that you need to be adversarial and disrespectful. And that's all. I, I watched the last video. Frankly, ma'am, you're the most adversarial, disrespectful person that's spoken tonight. No. But you're, you're welcome to make your comments. I just, I just I disagree. disagree. Yeah. <clears throat> I think you need to be held accountable. I like this one. Yes, we have to lose these seven on the drive. You know, I've been to a couple of meetings. I'm appalled at how you talk to staff. Yeah. Vern, I'm talking to you, Vern. Vern, could I have your... I'm not going to engage in a dialogue. Because okay. the way you talk to staff, if I was them, I'd be a lawyer. Because it's wrong. It'd be disrespectful. Unpaid. It'd be unpaid. And Good. then, Good. sir, Good. Bob, yeah. you roll your eyes when you don't like when you hear something. I don't know your name. I yeah. apologize, Jen. You rolled your eyes. Very disrespectful. You talk to our operator. It's him. He has a first name. I'm right. Mr. Well, McNeil, at least give right. his title. Right. I'm, I'm not going to Thank you for your I, 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 I have you for your I, I will not. Is will there not, anyone else who wants to make comments? No, I will not. Yeah. Frank, I, you've had your hand. Let's I, see if somebody else wants to I have not. Sit down. No, I will not. I will well, not I realize that's disorderly conduct, right? Yeah. No, I have the floor. If you would read Robert's Set. rules on how to run no. a meeting, you know that I am in the right. I'm just telling you what you don't want to hear. Be, be seated or leave the room. No. I'd like to hear what okay. you have to say. Oh, I already have them up. I'll call. Thank you. Ooh. I'd like to finish speaking. No. Why? We have called you out of order. You must Why? sit down or leave the room. Because I am the chair and I yeah, say absolutely. so. Because I say so, I have that authority. You're not following any type of rules. I follow the rules of the law. The law says I have prudential authority. I have the right to restrict people from and speaking you have the right and to talk to people with respect. Just like she was talking to Jen. Yes, friend. I have a question about the water warrant articles. Where, where, they were brought up today. Yes, sir. And they were approved. And what's, what's happening with them? Are they being studied as well? Is there, what's the status of that? Water budget is being carried out. So the water items that were going to be worked with, that, that were agreed upon, are they being? Yeah. Okay. Now, are those items going to help you with that problem that occurred at the well? I guess. Can I direct that know. question to Ray? We don't know until we have the engineering study. He just said that the water is going. That's an operational budget. That's not necessarily a capital budget. Okay, so the the well had a problem. The guys go to the well every day. There's a cell phone app that they they do. It says that they were at the well every day. So all the discussion about all, all the negativity that Ray received really he shouldn't have received because his system is that every day someone's at that well, checks that well, and checks off that they were at the well. I just want to make that statement. Um, my question is, the warrant money monies. Is that an item that would help you with reporting no, you, from that well? No. It is not. You have a warrant article, and you should have known this, a warrant article for a specific purpose can only be used for that purpose. I agree, but isn't that well, is that the well that that warrant was, I'm asking the question, is that, the, is that warrant for that well? Well, to answer your question, we've got two warrant articles, one for General Sullivan and one for Portable. Right. General Sullivan, the warrant article and the improvements that general would not cover corrective action for what happened. There were there were issues that and I want to make this make you aware of this so that because there's a lot you don't know, and it would be nice maybe for me to give you some information. 
There were things that we wanted to do in 2019, and there were things that were, we were holding off until 2020, because we were trying to keep the increases as low as possible. Okay. I believe that was 2020. Was it then, Ray? It was. There, I mean, there, okay. And not just 2020, there was discussion of upgrading the uh, sump pump system there to put a high-level alarm so that we'd have an alarm prior to a flood taking out any equipment down there. And also upgrading the VFD in the, in the cabinets to mean for us enclosures, right? As we can see, for the repair, it's almost $10,000 to do the upgrade. We're lucky that we've got insurance covering it, and it's only going to cost us $27 out of $100 out of our pocket right now. But that cost is going to be deferred over the next X amount of years because we are a self-funded organization with Primex when it comes to insurance. So we are going to pay for that repair. It's just going to be here. It's got to be done in this year. So that, that, that's all. I just wanted to make the comment that you know these guys were there every day and they were logging every day when they were there. I know that you brought me the issue of that. To clarify, what Bob is saying is he wants it on a piece of paper, not on a computer entry. It's very much hard copy. Hard right? copy matters for method industry purposes. Like What's that? Yeah, I know sprinkler. Exactly. Okay. Anyone else? Well, uh, yes, actually. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, Frank had questions about the warrant articles, and I just it's, a, it's an opportunity just to finish what you asked in terms of the warrant articles. Those warrant articles that were approved did come out of the short-term management study that Wright Pierce did. So just to understand, those, those warrant articles weren't just crafted out of thin air. Those are going to be part of the, the discussion when Wright Pierce comes to present their asset management findings. So, you know, just you know, to be clear on where we came up with that information and how we came up with that information. Um, we've got the, the preliminary study, which we can share. I'm going to give it to you, but the final draft is on its way. So, final draft is on its way. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, me. Um, Your name. Your name. Jessica Welch. As far as GSP, the 500, I have a first question. Will operators still be able to enter their measurements remotely at the site using the DC system? I don't know a whole lot about G Suite. I, I believe it operates the same way as Google Drive. It's just a, a more secure process. As far as secure, who will be able to edit those measurements? The commissioners. Oh, wait. Are you talking about the, the data files? Yes, data files. The, data the operators files. do that. The the commissioners don't touch data entry files. Who will have access to Will commissioners, those who have responsibility for entering the data, not responsibility, technical rewrite access. Well, that's you're the talking question. about inadvertent. <laughs> are inadvertent. I mean, if you're talking about, <clears throat> you have to get something. I'm not system. asking who has access to inadvertently rewrite. I'm asking who will have access to rewrite. The operators, the people who have to enter the data, and that's yes. The rest will have you on. Isn't that the system that's currently in place? I'm sorry, what? Isn't that the system that's currently in place for the commissioners having yes. you only? All right. One last time. Those files mm -hmm. are public information and need to be in the custody and control of the district. It can be an individual person's G drive. It's got to be owned and controlled by the district. Isn't that possible to do without moving a G speed, which is $504 a year? No, unfortunately, now you have to be able to assign access by person so that if someone goes in and enters something, it will leave a trail for it's that person. Absolutely possible. An audit trail. trail. Absolutely possible. Yes. With a system that you're yes. currently using and not Not for. currently. But with and G Suite, actually, it is. Yeah. It is currently possible. Yeah. G Suite yeah. has that capacity. As well, and it costs $504 a year. Yes, but that's for seven people, seven users. Okay, great. I'm so talking about this and that we currently have a place that does the same thing for free, I think. Nothing is free. Okay, electricity charges to computers. It meets the requirements of security. <coughs> okay, security meaning? That, that data can't be inadvertently or deliberately damaged without it leaving a that is currently possible in the system that you have in place that is free. 
And what's the name of this product? It's what? Is it Google Sheets? Google Drive. Google Drive. No, no, that's an individual. No, you can paint. Okay. You can make Google Drive in the custody of the district without making it cost five hundred and four dollars. But you have to have users. Yes, there are users on Google Drive. No. Okay. We're going with G Suite. That's the way it sure. is. Sure. Just please, on the record, I know a lot more about this. Will the commissioners be issued phones? I'm sorry? Will the commissioners be issued phones? No. And what We don't answer the phones anymore. Were the entire phone bills of the employees paid prior, or was it just a cost for hotline? Just a portion of the bill. There was $50 allotted to the operators, and I get $65 for myself. And that's probably cheaper than buying a phone for everybody, right? One would think, could you do a cost yes, analysis on that? And it was more expensive to pay $50 yes, a month? Yes, but then it becomes our property and we get to control, it's the district's property and we get to control their access. I'm sorry, I'm not clear. Is it more expensive the way you're moving to or is it less expensive? It's more expensive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. Okay. This is brand new to me. I'm not sure. But I'm not sure what the policy is going to be. Anyone else? I still have more questions, actually. You said a lot of times uh, professional yeah. engineers. Did you mean PEs yeah. or do you mean people who work as an engineer as their profession? We're talking about people who are licensed engineers in the state of New Hampshire. Okay. Professional civil engineers. Professional engineers. Yeah, well, they ain't amateurs. Okay, but they're licensed. Yeah. <laughs> As far as the clarifier, did that fall that, on your that list? That was your one question. I just said <laughs> I had session. one question. Okay. Uh, the, was the clarifier on your list of priorities? Or Direct your that? questions to oh, us. Oh, sorry. Ray, was the clarifier on your list no, of priorities? My name is Fern. Oh, I, I really was kind of making a joke that I'm really asking Ray. Was the list of priorities given to you by Ray, was the clarifier on there? Yes. And when you say, um, sorry, Robert, when you said that that's something that immediately stands out to you, uh, would you acknowledge that it is something that was brought to your attention? Absolutely, and I just brought it up to say this is a big item because there's no backup to it. Great, so if we had gone when over When the well that broke, they had another well to fall back while they fixed it. That clarifier said that the money was at $75,000 roughly to fix. And you've got to get the parts. So it's not something, a pump fails, you can get another pump. Is it the right one? You can get through with it. Clarifier is a whole separate piece of equipment. A lot of the stuff on it is antiquated. It has not been working for two years. No, it's been four months. Since four months. months. Okay. Actually, it's working now. We can talk about that. It's okay. The end result is that running gives the backup. So we're not polluting the same Great. I just think that if we had gone over the priority list, that we've asked multiple times as repairs to discuss and go through each item so that we understand, then we would have touched on that instead of glossing over it. Right. I'm also a little concerned when you, uh, did you mention buying a four-wheel drive vehicle as an yes. immediate priority yes. in your eyes? We're currently paying one of the employees to drive his truck, and it's expensive. Okay. And furthermore, if you understand the liability, him driving his private truck while doing business, we own everything. And I know that from you being the union right. president for the state. Sorry. I know exactly what kind of nonsense you can get into if somebody crashes that vehicle. I would be interested in seeing the cost of liability coverage versus another small to our another small district, what they do in their practice, and uh, also, you know, how often those sorts of incidents happen, and what we can do as a district protector. I can tell you what happened. Excuse me. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still. I'm still yeah. Still well, let me just answer your question real simple. I actually I, said that I was interested in it. I, I'm, I really don't want to answer for a second. Um, yeah, the, that was pretty. Oh, and oh, I didn't finish writing this one down. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Exactly. 
This goes in his personnel in the record. Future. Thank you. 
responses in the second page in red. Oh, you included it within the body. I just, yeah, okay. I typed your email and just added that to it. Really okay. Can you That's not the official document you sent me. I don't, I'm not trying to claim that. It is all the same language. Okay. Um, it was recomposed, but just that way I could, I could add it. Get my information. And there is, you know, in terms of your directive about setting up Google Drive, I took the initiative and, and laid out an option. You guys would need to approve it. It sounds like we've already approved Google Suite, so that's not going to make a difference. So that's not going to waste it. But if you take an opportunity to look at it, I think you'll see that there's an option to move forward with the same type of protection that Google Suite offers. Just we'll read it and go from there. Any other comments, questions? Oh, you want to come up with the date? I don't have the calendar. Do you like that calendar? Yeah. yeah Sorry, also one other thing. Guys. This is here. This thumb drive has all the bank sheets that we use. Uh, the the working bank sheets that are discussed in the drive. They're all backed up on that, and that's for you guys to store wherever you'd like. So that there's no Thank chance you. of. Um, Oh, I like this better. I'm, much I'm sorry. Okay. How about the, okay, that's today. Two weeks is too soon. How about the 29th? 29th, 29th. <coughs> Does the 29th work for you? Sure. Okay. Should we check to see if there are other town meetings on that date? There are. No, there's the next budget well, committee meeting. Last time. <laughs> I checked. Right. The next meeting of the budget committee is July 24th, I believe. Between that two So it's, we, I think we cleared it for two weeks. We're okay. 6.30? 6 6.30. Yeah. And I suspect I'm going to have to reserve this one again. Yeah, probably. We're so we as a postscript, I would really like somebody to make a contribution to the legion because they've been really nice to us. You can make it in Judge Howard's name if you wish. Yeah. Seeing no hands flailing in the air, <laughs> I adjourn the meeting. I think we ought to do it and have it all for the next meeting. Well, we are also going to have work as part of it. Okay, good. Yeah. You know, okay. Yeah. So, and that's why we'd also, after the workshop, do a presentation. Probably in the meeting. So, Okay. Okay.
actually I would like to talk to you at some point here. I'll get the information. Okay? Okay. Do you want to get something? Do you have my number? I don't know. Yeah. No, that's fine. Call you. Good kid. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to call you. Okay. Good. My number is 603 289 Did you know I'm so silly, I'm going to make sure it comes No, that's a good idea. Very good. Anybody has a Yep. Very good. Yeah, thank you. I know. You don't have to like the box. I didn't like it. Hey. Except for the box. Every two hours, I was flying in the seats. Okay? But guess what? He's the freaking boss. I know. His office yeah. wants to talk hey. every two hours. See you soon. And you know what? Yes. Give me a shelf. Yeah. Let me know when we're going to start. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, Welcome to the board. We're going to take. Coming back. Yeah. After we read his stuff, we're going to take. He needs to take a walk through. Sure. He's been yeah. there. Let's and do we'll it. do. Yeah. We'll give you a call in a week or so. I'm going to be gone next week, so I'm out of state. But, um, out of state. Yeah, my, my kids. My was out of state last night, too. My kids moving to California. Yeah. Yeah. The Halo team. I got it. Right. Okay. And so, oh. we're sending them to the Naval Post